if there's a treatment that's available that seems to be efficacious and is safe, that, uh, you know, when you say it doesn't have any downsides, the main thing would be that, it's, that it has very much positive effects and it doesn't seem to have a negative side effect profile, that would be something that would be very useful to have and available. If it hasn't had large randomized control clinical trials so that it's been tested in large groups, um, or, you know, or, you know, or, or sham control uh, studies that have been done, then you don't have the um, uh, supporting uh, research to say that this is a bona fide treatment effect. When most of what's available and what we've done is with case studies, small case series, um, uh, testimonials more or less across different uh, disorders to basically say, yes, this is a real effect, um, people will say, well, we need more. We need larger studies, but it takes a long time to do that. Clinical studies are expensive. Uh, to do them well, they need to be done with people who know how to do clinical trials. And um, sometimes, you know, you need to do multi-site uh, clinical, cl clinical interventions. And um, it takes a while to do it. And it, takes a, and, it, and it takes a lot to do it well. So to get funding for that um, is difficult, especially in a limited funding and, you know, climate. So having something that could be available it would be really important because you know what's been consistently reported is positive effects with very few, if any, uh, side effects for this. And um, that's what uh, I think is, uh, encourages us as researchers to want to pursue this. At the same time, we have to maintain this uh, agnostic kind of perspective to really be fair to the scientific process, to be able to treat it uh, as something that needs to be researched and without bringing biases to it. And so, um, you know, as clinical researchers, you know, you're walking this line between advocacy and being sort of objective about what you're doing, but we are very encouraged about the findings that we've seen. For PTSD treatments, there's uh, established empirically supported psychotherapy treatments that have been out in the literature. It's a much more mature literature that's been available. So I would see this being something that would be uh, an augmentation. For TBI, there is no consensus treatment. And so this would be great as a potential first-line treatment for TBI.